my last question was um okay Cheddar owes over seven million Ghana CDC in unpaid taxes documents from GRA review sources as I see radio did you hear that? Yeah, I wonder why Asasi Radio had to be the one that had to fish that out. And is this thing government radio station? A radio station that only came out when a particular political party existed is the new one. It's a baby radio station. I wonder why not GRA coming at me. Why they had to be the investigators. And even in the news that I was reading, he's saying that someone's fact is saying this and that and that. But it's, it's, it's a media, it's, it's a media outfit. So what, what stops them from doing their no, job? No, the media outfit is not supposed to be the one announcing for my tax issues. They should get the GRA involved. It's the GRA's job. But if the GRA had given... Well, they have right to information. No, I'm saying if the GRA had given that information to them, they can publish it. Exactly. Okay? But that's not what happened. I'm sure you should have read it. When, you, when you're reading it, it's saying that someone is doing the investigation and this is what they've come out with. So even GRE was not saying they were doing that. However, in four days, if a country is complaining about me not paying taxes, when they have been taking taxes from me for a good 21 years, everything I pay for. I pay for two, three hundred containers in three years that I bring to this country. How am I going to? I can't smuggle them out. I pay for workers, snakes, this, that. I'm paying. Look, you pay all the taxes. And even as of now, taxes has overt our revenue. And we all know this. But here is the catch and the funny thing that happened. After trying to do that, you see, before that was my convention being cancelled. Okay, if you can call it whatever, government attack, whatever, I don't care. Let them do whatever. You know, I'm doing what I have to do. But after that, they came with a tax issue. And now they should have kept that trick for later. You know, they came too quick with that. I mean, they were struggling. They had to bring something up quickly. That, four days after, the commissioner of taxes was exposed. He's supposed to be retired. He's been working for four years. Mm. And he has been doing stuff with the government that's wrong. So how come... The doctor who is supposed to cure you out of ACE and supervise you has ACE himself. How do you expect me to even believe them when the people who are claiming I haven't paid taxes are robbing taxes? And the government that is behind the people are also allowing the law them to break the law. So, you know, this country is in a big mess. I'm sorry, Andy. We need to look at the mess that we're in and start cleaning it up and stop trying to put people in a position just to make ourselves look good. And that's why I'm saying about as I radio. I mean, look, they, they could have called me. Uh, they could have called me and said, hey, this is what we heard. We want to make sure. But they went ahead and published it, of course. And it, it, it's somehow politically connected. So, you know, for me, I just want to say to you that this is a radio station it's a media platform it's all of that and uh, the owner is a good person but the owner might have 20 workers and 15 of the workers are in the pockets of government and really breaking the rules doing what they like so they've turned the radio or the media platform to a governmental platform you know this sort of nonsense we should cut it like we're stabbing ourselves and killing ourselves and destroying ourselves then when we finish we say oh god help us we're hungry this, that. come on we should wake up you know, if, no, 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 no. if you are not paying taxes and a radio station reports it, or if they are fed with that information, and let's say it is correct, I don't see why it shouldn't be discussed. Andy, the point is, if I wasn't paying the taxes, do you think I would even be sitting here talking well, there to are you lot of, There are a lot of people who are, no. who are not paying their taxes. No, 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 no. Yes, I'm, saying that, I'm saying that if I wasn't. Do you think I'll be sitting here? How come they didn't say that I haven't paid my modern taxes? They said the taxes were 2013 and 2015. That person is, this is political. And I know, and I don't want you to look like maybe you're supporting the politicians or you're working for them. No, no, but the fact, is, no, the fact is, taxes are being paid. And I have paid, and there's proof. You saw me, I went straight and I spoke to you the next day. And I told the country that we're being robbed. Yeah, bread. Because everybody is coming to us, attacking us, this, that, 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 just because of some presidential candidates. You know, that's the problem. The problem is not the taxes. How much do you think, you know, a common Ghanaian can give? You know, we, we cry, we're broke. And uh, I pay 300 people every month. I pay their snit. I'm paying taxes, duties, this, that, that. <laughs> so for you to frame me and try to... Do, look... You had all this time, 2013, if you think I haven't paid taxes. Do you wait till 2024 when I <laughs> decided to stand for president before you come and publish me? Come on, there are some things I want even the nation to th become smart thinkers and figure it out. 
that this is an attack and it wasn't the first time they just shut my uh, uh, what do you call it uh, convention oh, when yeah. i brought four great voices in africa from four different countries so they can ignite the voice of our economy our governance our development our industrialization it's not easy to do that you make me do all this hard work and you come and cancel it you try and get the ghana government try and get nigerian government and tell them to bring those four people they won't come Mm. They would think that you're setting them up. And now I bring them, then you stop it. I go here and then you cancel this. And you can <laughs> Look, if you have a problem with me, you need to find a solution for it. Now, it's not just the government. I think some of the public too. I don't have a problem with the public because I'm not going to waste my time having a problem with either the government or the public. It's a waste of time for me. I need to work on solution. And this, I would rather find a solution for the problems to our industrialization, to our economic growth, to our wealth building, to our nation building. The important things in life is what I'm looking at. Right. Kwame, please come in. Andy, thank you very much. I think listening to him, clearly he has an interest in the arts and tourism. Um, looking at the culture and creative industries the world over, <coughs> sorry, it's become the lifeblood for most economies. And um, with you being somebody who wants to leave this country as a person who has more of my focus on the culture and creative industries, I want to know if you have a blueprint for our creative economy. I don't have a blueprint, but I have great ideas that can connect. You know, creating an international, you know, art gallery that it's somehow governmentally supported and not privately could actually attract a lot of talent in this country for us to bring all our art pieces together okay this is from voices to drawings to paintings to many things but when i talk about industrialization i'm talking about big scale of doing everything you know you need to scale it to a bigger level where you can introduce it and promote it and market it to the world because the world is 7.2 billion of people or 7.3 billion if you want to sell something for 1 million you have somebody that will buy if you want to sell something for 1 billion you have somebody that will buy you just need to connect to the world and i think the current government did a great job with promotion they promoted the country very well i give that to them however it was just based around festivities <laughs> So, you know, beyond something, something, and, uh, uh, yes, and then the return, something, something. Yeah, yeah. Return. Yeah, return. Yeah. yeah, that was all great ideas. You know, it really helped the country. You know, you'll be surprised if you tap into my history. I started this movement in 2002 when I started a nightclub called Temptations, where I invited people from England and, and uh, Holland and all of that. I'm sure, Andy, you know about this. Mm -hmm. And at that time, that's when you probably heard of me. So what I was doing then, is what they just did <laughs> on a bigger scale <laughs> but i had the people coming every christmas are you so, going to continue it no 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 i if stopped you president? I, no 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 i stopped a long time because no you see asking of the year of return no i think i think we should not really consider that as a business uh support okay it's just leisure they didn't turn into a business support because when the people came they celebrated for two weeks. And after the two weeks, they didn't have anything substantial that convinced them to leave their last investment in this country. So they just left. And then it became a memorial thing for them that every Christmas, Ghana is freedom and is fun. And you can party till six, eight. Now so the tourism ministry gives us figures of how they contribute right, to our yeah. economy almost every year. Oh, look, they will, they will, but they do it just for six days. So they will come. They will buy things here, they will circulate, and then they leave. Okay, that's a vacuum in your economy. When it's like pump and dump, and then the economy sucks it, then it's starving again. So even if it could go on for three months, which is a quarter of the year, you will see a lot of avenues for revenues and returns. But because it's such a quick shock, it's one week, and it goes. But guess what? They also take things back with them. They take your art, they take things, they take some of their human resources, they take it with them, they pull in. <laughs> because they're not staying, they're not investing. So they see anything that has potential, they wanna take it with them. Although they want to claim that they're Africans, but they are not for Africans. They're diasporan, would 
die as a diaspora because <laughs> that's where he is and the system is good for them when they come to africa they don't have that system so they're not going to live here they're not going to be here i am talking about a system that will let somebody move here and have their children here have their wife here and they will be working for Ghanaians, not celebrating and going they will be working for the next 20 30 years if you have a million of those people in this country you will have a very strong economy right we are please yes i have two questions all right so when it comes to um the regular Ghanaian, you are somewhat notorious for having outrageous promises being made to the um, public. I'm not calling it out outrageous, but it seems outrageous to a lot of regular Ghanaians. And the most notorious one is um, the dredging of the sea into Kumasi. All right. And then me as... I want you to ask me a question, not an essay. No, so no, 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 not, not an essay. essay. <laughs> Definitely not an essay. So me as uh, a person, I'm thinking about the economic implications and you're going against one, a very notorious entity, which is the um, nature the environment so i want to you to walk us through sure. what you're going to do sure. exactly there and then the second question is uh, i take one at a time okay okay no problem because i think it's it's a long question mm -hmm. so first of all mm -hmm. i want to tell you that that was not a notorious act of promises because okay. i don't promise the only All time right. i promised was my wife and i fulfilled it <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay i don't promise at all mm. what i said is a purpose Mm -hmm. that needs to be implicated mm -hmm. it's a vision that action needs to come for mm -hmm. it to happen because you see a vision without action is a mere dream okay. and me dredging the sea and connecting the water bodies it's just me trying to tell the leaders and the people of this country that out of negligence and ignorance they have left these water bodies lying there without any usage for it and therefore, people are throwing rubbish and all sort of things into it. It's choked. It's not dredged. It's not connected. But because I'm an industrialist, I'm already thinking of a way to create logistics, the pathways to use the water. Now, since you were talking about water, I'm sure you like the environment. So yes. you want to learn more about the environment. Definitely. Water is life. Mm -hmm. Water feeds a lot of things on the ground. So everything that when your mother impregnated you, mm -hmm. whilst you were in the stomach, everything you took from the medicine to the food you ate and everything came from the ground. And it's the water that feeds it. So water is what is forming you. Mm -hmm. And therefore water should be used. It should be utilized. It should, be, it should create avenues for us. Mm -hmm. It should be our irrigation to expand our agriculture. Uh, production. It should be a lot of things. Now, I had already studied the map. I just didn't open my mouth to say it. I only said it at the place that it was sensitive enough, Kumasi. Because Kumasi have an issue with water. And they wanted the part of the sea, and they wanted Cape Coast to be part of the Ashanti Empire. Kwame Nkrumah took uh, the man-made lake all the way to the border of Bono. At that time, it was part of Ashanti, but did not make it enter. You can check your history. So it's there. Nobody has connected. I already knew about River Pra and River Oti. So Kumasi has river. And this river leads all the way to the Cape Coast water. Nobody, no leader has decided to dredge it. Over 100 years, nobody has thought of it. Except for Kwame Nkrumah who came to create one of the biggest man-made lake that we don't even know what to do with it. I was already planning and thinking how I'm going to use water to connect the country and then gain the biggest, most powerful uh, distribution channels in Ghana and then moving on to West Africa. Because look, I'm a businessman, I'm an industrialist, I'm a visionary. Don't think I just want to be a president to sit in chair and ride in cars so motorbike can lead me. No, I want to work. I want to implement these things. So now these waters, if you connect Pra and if you connect Oti, to the Cape Coast Sea and dredge. Now, Kumasi is in the center of Ghana because you, you think it's Accra, but it's Kumasi because Kumasi is where you get the Western Corridor and the Eastern Corridor. And these two leads you to the North. So Kumasi is actually the central. <laughs> and everything comes from Accra to Kumasi because there's nothing else. There's no railways and there's no water bodies. Now let's go to any of these countries that are well-developed. 
when you go to England, London is where I grew up partly. I used to drive through the Blackwall Tunnel. And in the tunnel, they tell me that there's water around it, but I never saw the water. So they build the tunnel to create a way through the water mm -hmm. so cars can pass through. When you drive 10 minutes down the line, you're going to see London Bridge. London Bridge is a bridge that goes over water. The water leads you through the city everywhere. And that's where their development are. Their development is not on M25, it's not on M1, none of, none of them. When you're driving on these motorways, what you see is walls and glass. So you don't see anything. You don't see any neighborhood. When you come to Africa, we are still dependent on the road that our colonial master created for us. And it's single roads too. And that's where Articulator is going. That is where Petrol Tank is going. That is where Tico Uber is going. That's where the private car made back Lamborghini. Everything on that one single road. And it's got portals all over, my friend. You have to be out of your mind to think that you will be able to develop your country on this single road. The fact is someone has hidden the truth from you. That your water connection is where you can develop. Here's what you can get when you develop beside the water you're going to find all virgin land that has never been developed. And there could be a new communities all coming up, new line of distribution, new irrigation system to find, uh, help your farming, a new climatic control of weather, as, uh, especially a place like Boliga. When we went to Boliga on our, our, our tour, the air that was blowing had heat in it. Heat. Like, it's almost fire, and some of the ground is already catching bushfire. That's how much the heat is. So in eight years, they could have a serious problem. You know what causes that? The water body. The water bodies and the connection to feed the ground and to make the crowds bring more of moisture and all of that. They haven't done it. It's because of development. When I'm in my house and I come out of my house, the heat that I feel sometimes is how our developments are. It's just by the roadside and it's not by the water. So what I want to say here today and the people who are listening to me, I have brought you one hell of a vision that is going to open room for your development, room for human development, social development, distribution, industrialization, and connecting to other parts of Ghana regionally. Besides that, we can connect straight to West Africa, like River Pra behind Techiman. It goes straight into the sea. And that's the border that you share with Takrade, hmm. now, uh, beyond Takrade. Now, the question I want to say is that, were any of you studying all of these things? No, Thinking of it? We, yeah, exactly. They never, they never teach you in school because they're hiding it from you. <laughs> I have come and I have found out I'm sharing it with you and you're fighting me. Please. I'm not saying that, <laughs> okay, you know. Unfortunately, we, we, we have to go at... I have at, a second at, question. Just yeah, small, 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 small. My, okay. bo my boss is on my I'm, neck. I'm sorry. So um, you spoke about equity. And I'll tell uh, your boss that he should give us the minutes we're here <laughs> you spoke uh, what's his problem Andy <laughs> when we finish we'll give him his radio station back in the beginning Please. of this interview you spoke about equity empowerment and you said you came for and equality and equality and you came for Ghanaians and uh, women so I have a gender background so I want to know your vision for all those three empowerment equity and uh, equality Quality. and then women because there's an uh, underrepresentation whether you like it or not of women even in governance yeah. so i want to know your okay. feedback on so that. first of all equality mm -hmm. it's one thing that i would like to deal with as a second topic because it's the second part yeah but equity yes equity is that Ghanaians have been robbed of their equity all the minerals in this country are state resources they don't belong to the government they belong to the state mm -hmm. but if you look at equity their shares they're not getting it somebody else has come and bought all the gold one country can come and buy all the lithium and then they take it but we don't know the returns that comes to the state. So I want to be able to create a 16 industrial regional revolution. Okay. And do, by doing so, it tells me what Volta region is wealth, what Ashanti region is wealth in minerals, in resources. And they would work and create economy out of the origin and create salary and wealth out of the origin. It's not going to be me going to bring somebody from outside to come and take over. So that's what the equity means. Equality is giving people a fair preference of share, of value and everything. For instance, people who are coming from America should not be highly valued than the citizen. And a man should not be overvalued over a woman. That is equality. 
You see, the equi equilibrium of this equation is what sustains humanity for their own rights and not to be violated. And I believe that this should be the number one principle for governance. If we depend on our political governance being based on foreign influence by what people say, then we as a country don't know where we're going. But if we have the basic principles where equity it's something that we get our fair share out of just to get an average salary so we have a middle income lifestyle that is fair for humanity if we don't do all of this equality problem and you know valuing one above one and this and that you know i think that it's time for women to be a part of our governance a part of our decision i don't see why women and i, I advocate for women because i was kept in a woman's womb for nine months i know the pain and when i was born yes my father was rich but my mother knew what i had to eat you know she they they, they put so much into us okay they feed us they do all of these things but when it comes to entrepreneurial we take them out. When it comes to empowerment, we take them out. When it comes to making them a part of the country and decisions of the country or the nation, we take them out. I am bringing you women back in. I am advocating for women. I'm saying that I want women to become entrepreneurs of this country. I want women to become the vice or the presidents of this country. I want women to have a say and a voice, just like how I want the youth mm. to have a voice. All right, Adam. Right. Thank you very much. And of course, empowerment, you know I'm doing that already, right? Okay. <laughs> Are you empowered? Uh, uh, well, if you, I want to see that relative. all this time that you have sat here with me. Oh, do you feel I mean, empowered? I mean, or you feel I mean, I say, uh, I just want to uh, know. No, I don't think I, I, the, the word is conned. I mean, you've said what you have to say to me. It is left to me as the citizen or the listener to decipher whatever you're saying. But I, I, I didn't I talk feel, about decision. I'm yes, talking about empowerment. and I'm saying that you are on the right path. Thank you. Okay. Oh, well, thank you very much. Mr. Nana Kwame Bediako. Bediako. Yeah. Have you heard of the... Say it again, please. Bediako. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said Bediako, so oh, okay. I was correcting you. Sorry. Have you, have you heard of the Buanka Inland Port? Um, no, I heard of some Inland Ports, but, you know, I've heard a lot of... Those are the promises, okay? Uh, the purpose of doing things is just making sure that there's a good plan, there's a connection, yeah, there's value. Uh, the, the reason I ask this is that, I mean, with... Your your message of dredging the sea to Kumas. One of the things you talk about is uh, having containers. Logistics. logistics things yeah. there. That's logistics. Yeah. The reason I'm asking is that there has been a plan to have an inland port, which will be a free one at Buankra, close to Kumasi, to serve. It's already there. I'm coming to serve the inner part of the country and the log. Uh, those landlocked mm -hmm. other countries, mm -hmm. landlocked countries. Areas. Yeah. yeah. Areas. And it started during Kufo's time, and up to now, it's not been done. In 2022, there was a promise that by March 2024, the project will be delivered. I mean, with somebody who has the heart, the people of Kumasi at heart, and Where wanted. From? Yeah, and <laughs> wanted. Logistic to be moved there. I wanted to find out whether you've done some feasibility studies on the project and what you think could be done to facilitate given the opportunity. I just done the research and it's very feasible. I know numbers already because I know countries that have done that already, you know. So these things, they even exist on the internet. You can find what happened. Like right now, uh, Egypt is doing another canal dredging that is 1.5 billion, but they've already estimated what it will bring in 50 years and it's about 112 billion. That's the returns, you know, just as I've been speaking and you guys are doing all of this, you know, Beni have picked it. They're, they're beginning to dredge. The, you see, the vision is one thing. The action is the other thing. Okay. And the promises that they've given you is only eight years because there's no action. It's just a promise. And, and the difference between me, a politician comes with a promise. I'm a leader. A leader will always have a purpose. Okay, a politician will move with a program. I'm a leader, so I would definitely have a vision. And a politician wants to be just elected for whatever position. I want to build nations. I want to build countries. And if the opportunity of creating that logistics in that area would help to feed whatever industrial vision that I have for the country, then it will be one of the priorities. Okay, it's the same thing with railways. I don't need just one. We need multiple. Yeah, so so I, I, I wanted to find out your plan on, I mean, having some inland ports among others 
in, in part of the country to help move logistics to some of the that is That is what the whole water transportation is about. My dear friend, oh. it's about logistics. It's about, but you know, I just said I chose Ashanti yeah. to, to release the headlines because it was the right place. Their history is very sensitive with water. That's why they picked it up. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so that's why I use the term sea okay. instead of the dredging and canal because canal is a mixture of different types of waters do you understand it's sea river lagoon different type of things and it's flowing okay now uh there is this uh, last question yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. uh there has been a research done uh regarding policies of people in lead of the 2024 elections and the leading policy by the uh, info analytics through their uh, research is the 24 hour economy by uh, uh, former president Mahama and the blue economy followed by the blue economy by Dr. Bao Mia and in that research John Mahama is leading followed by Dr. Bao Mia and Alan Kujo Chematin, 7.5%, then you, 2.3%. Mm -hmm. Regarding the policies, mm -hmm. why do you think that, do you think that all of the things you are saying is not getting down to the people? I think it's... And I, what do you make of your 2.3%? I think it's just a complete scam. You don't do a polling that nobody knows about and then you just come overnight. There's There are pollings. All the pollings you can see, I won all of them. They did digital pollings. Everyone that people knew about, I won all of them. There's only one that I was in tie with Mahama. This, overnight, they just brought it out. But I know it's a political, whatever, whatever. Look, I'm not interested in all of this. You know, I'm, like, I want to tell you something, okay? But you mean I, you, you don't uh, see... I don't, I, don't, I, don't even, I don't even believe in the info analytics because they're just branding themselves and marketing themselves. It's politics. They're trying to campaign themselves. So they're going to do all sort of things. Look, I've said, I've had interviews that they change the headlines. They tweak it. They say this. Even when we were talking about the sea, they said, I said, I'm going to bring the sea from Kumasi to Accra. <laughs> you see, I, I, from Accra to Kumasi. You see, that's not what I said. I said that I would dredge the water and bring the sea to Kumasi. I did not mention Accra. So it's always twisting things and that. But you know what? I am very proud of myself. Even if it was 0.1%. The fact that I am aligned with whatever people. You're in the top four. No, I'm saying with the fact that I'm aligned with whatever people makes me feel like they might see it as a race. I see it as a journey. Right. And my 2.5 can become. 2.3. 2.3 can become 80% in the end. You see, you never know what God has for you. But just concentrate on the path. Don't deviate. Keep going. And I believe in industrialization. And whether it's uh, blue days or 24-hour economy, whatever that everybody is saying, I would guarantee and rest assured everyone in this room and everyone that is listening to me that it all, all of this will fall back into industrialization. Right, thank you, Adam. Congratulations, Adam, please, congratulations Adam, on that. Adam, please. Adam, please, please. Oh, I, like beg. London. I beg you. I beg you. I beg no, you. You've asked a lot of questions. I, Adam, I, think, Adam. I, think, I think you're also very, very political because <laughs> you, you have your information. You're, you know, it's like you're doing your promotions for them. Listen, Adam, young man, don't, Adam, Adam, don't, please, Adam, don't, Adam, don't Adam, get Adam, lost Adam, in politics. Adam. Follow leadership. Oh, and let me ask Adam, the next question. Pezzo, Pezzo. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's Adam, fine. Just oh, that's not make, make Robert come in. Right. Yeah, I expected you to say that that was fake. They, they, they didn't do it well. I don't know about this pollings. No one, did you know about it? No one here knew about this pollings. And no, then no, the no, next no. day, you pay all the media people in Ghana and then they start. You're making comes. You know, please, oh. you, you can go ahead. This is not the first time that they do such polls. Well, fine, fine. But I'm not, I'm not really worried about that. Always that everybody I don't even know the guys that did the polls. I think that, you know, Oh, Musa Dangwa, uh, uh, no, yeah. please do a national one, okay? Tell Musa Dangwa that you should get off the track and stop supporting politicians with your crooked stuff. You should get on the right track. If you want things to be judged by nations, give them the chance to be part of it. Don't just go back door and let them use you and you create something. Wait, please, let me finish. Don't let them use you. And then after you start distributing it on media platforms, that can give it traction. All of that, I'm used to it. I'm used to people bossing thousands of people, giving them T-shirt, giving them money and come and stand there. Do you want your politics to be like this in this country? Any young man that thinks like that, I think I'm sorry. I think that they're in a form of stupidity. They need to get themselves out of it. Don't let people pay you money so you use your thumb to vote for them. You're selling your soul.
Anybody that tells you here's money, take off your clothes or uh, put your thumb on this, it's all selling souls. You guys should not support that. Let's deal with facts. Let's do the right things. Next time there's any polling, please tell the Musa Dankwa whatever, make it national. Let all be part of it. But Thank but you very much. Thank Adam. Thank you. Andy, it's good that we correct some Adam. of them. No, no, please, it's, it's done. Robert. It's all corrected. And and I have to go. I think my time is up. Robert, you wanted to ask yes, me something? Have, well, I just have one minute and I gotta go. All right, great. So I um, gave you a lot of time and uh, that's I think it's fair share. Um for me in in education I find I find a lot of our faults. And in education, I find a lot of remedy. I don't even know if that statement makes a lot of sense. But all I'm trying to say is that um, education is foundational to almost everything we are facing, whether we are growing up to become people looking for employment or we are growing up seeking to become entrepreneurs or we are nationalistic or we are politically woke because we are taught constitution or elements in there or um we we are value creators and so we are able to think you know about how to turn our little into plenty that kind of thinking and all of that and goes on and on if there is any policy or any idea or any blueprints from for education i would really like to hear that from you i think first of all uh, thank you very much for the question. I think that's what I'm doing right now. I'm educating people that learn about how you can turn your cocoa to seven different things. That's an industrialization. I'm teaching people to learn about how they can turn their gold to seven different things. Reserves, currency, hedge, and many other things. Okay? And international trading. So everything to do with our natural resources and commodities, if we don't process them, if we don't produce them, if we don't manufacture them, if we don't package them, then we don't know about it. So you can go to school as much as you want and have all the degrees. But if you don't know what is around your surrounding to create wealth out of it, then you just have a common degree to hold in your hands. And that's what a lot of politicians in this country have studied to acquire degrees so they can come and become something, 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 uh, works and housing, something, something. Look, if you haven't built houses, you don't have experience, this, that, that, that. You can have all the degrees. You can never do it because you need to understand what is on the ground, how to manufacture it, how to turn it around. We don't know how to fabricate our own metals. So we only buy fabricated metals already. But the metal itself is iron ore. Until we learn how to industrialize the iron ore and turn it to metal, we will not be able to learn how to fabricate the metal to even create a machine. So that process is missing. I still think that we are somehow col colonially uh, being educated by Western, uh, um, should I call it, uh, uh, yeah, well, maybe Western uh, academia, uh, whatever, uh, should I say that maybe uh, Western academia resources, whatever that they are trying to make us learn about. If it's geography, then we need to learn about how to dig the grounds and find golds and how to turn other things into things. It's not about learning about geography, where the equator is and where is that. It's not going to pay you. It's going to give you an idea of where the equator is, but really you need to understand what is on the ground. And I think that education is missing in our country. And even if you have educational ministries, they should concentrate on that. They should concentrate on that. And that is what is going to create you more of entrepreneurs when you have entrepreneurs coming out of universities which is a project that i think you're part of that we're already doing you know what we want to do with the university challenge in this country where i'm investing one million in a group of people that will come with the best idea the reason why i'm investing that one million is not because i have too much to spare it's because i want to open the door for Ghanaian educational platform for the curriculum that we have to create entrepreneurs to empower them so they think like entrepreneurs they think like business people they think Think like leaders, not just go to acquire a degree so you can find a job when you don't even have the job. So if you don't create this industrial parks, you don't create this industrial mindsets in your country, please, you can forget about all the other things that you're talking about. That I'm going to do this. I'm going to do because they all come from industrialization. And I want to say on this radio and at this very moment, from entertainment to fashion to everything is based on industrialization. Any country in this world that has been developed, they developed their country out of being industrialized. We Africans are refusing to accept the fact and the truth that even if we're ed educating our people, we should let them understand that they have to industrialize their mind and industrialize their product. Why are we hiding the truth from them? Why are we fighting against the truth? Why are we pushing the good ones to the side and entertaining the bad ones? We are our own devils. We are the ones killing ourselves. We are the ones destroying ourselves. If you are educated, 
then you should know what is right from wrong. Right. And the best time to learn is when you're wrong. You accept it. Thank Many you. thanks for coming. Nana Kwame Bedia. Your good friend DJ Mensah is asking me to ask you if you meet President Okufuado right now, what would be that one question you ask him? Oh. In, 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 in one minute. I would um I would probably have the normal conversation I have with him all the time because when he sees me he calls me cheddar but I have to call him Mr. President <laughs> you know um oh you have a good relationship with him huh? yeah or I call him nana sometimes I just think that you know regardless everything that is happening in our political world I think for a citizen it's important that we respect our elders it doesn't matter whatever people say I am not the type. I really respect Nana. I respect Mahama. I respect Alan Chamatin. I respect all the people. I think that's why they're my friends. And they know I have respect for them. But there is the other side that everybody is complaining this, da, 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 da. I am not interested in being a part of that. So I don't even have questions for him. Okay. You know, I am just interested in finding solutions to problems that I think I will be able to solve to make that become a part of my contribution to this national success. That's all. Many thanks for coming. Thank you very you much, Andy. You for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listeners, this is where we Andy, end we, it. We are inviting him to trek this evening, National Theatre. I won't Gifty. be able to be there. I'm sorry, but, you know, you see, I don't actually make myself available yeah. just 24 hours before something and something. And I want Andy to know that it's out of respect. That's why I walked into this room. Thank you. Because you have sent me multiple of messages. <laughs> That's right. Don't think I haven't been seeing it. Oh, you've but been seeing them. When I saw you... I knew that I had the chance to make it up. And guess what? It's Thank been you. the longest interview. And I hope that the people who are listening to me has actually had some benefits from the things I've a shared. A lot of them. I'll know? send you screenshots. Yeah. You'll be amazed. I, I, and I, and I, I want just to be remembered that I came to add value. I came to create. I came to change. You know, I believe in revolution. I think I'm a revolutionarist. I don't think I am. You know, and so that change has to happen. And thank you guys. Thank you for supporting. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listeners, this is where we ended. Many thanks for listening. It's been amazing with leader of the new force, Nana Kwame Bediako. That's right.